Steve saying there's no thing is called Arabic Christian. That is not true. That's false. You are you are wrong, my friend. Arabic Christians are exist. There's a huge tribes and even kingdoms. As an example, Al Ghassasina and Al Manadira, both are Arab Christians, and they are huge kingdoms, and they used to have armies of hundreds of thousands. Not only that, all the 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 most important poetry in the history of Arabia is written by Arab Christian specifically, all of it. So when you say there's no, I think it's called Arab Christian, that is because of your ignorance. Again, Arab Christian is not an ethnic. Arab is people who live in the desert. And the word Arab means desert. The word Arab or Arabia, it's a desert. It's a word mean desert. It's not a name of a desert. This is an Aramaic word, mean desert. So the Arabian is those who live in the desert. So if you say there's no Arab Christians, you are absolutely out of touch. Uh, many people think still until now that the word Arab is an ethnic. The word Arab is not an ethnic, and we have to repeat that nonstop. You go to your church, even they say to you more stupid things because your priest is ignorant. They say to you that the Muslims are Ishmaelist from Ishmael. The priest who said that to you, you better correct him, otherwise he will stay donkey for the rest of his life. The Old Testament says it clearly that Hajar, she took her son and she married him to an Egyptian woman. So how the Ishmael, the Ishmaelist is, is the sons of the Arab. Is Egypt is the land of the Arab, but you know, copy paste. <clears throat> uh, somebody's saying why Christians, they hate Muslims so much. In the middle of, of the night, you are just a fraud, like your prophet, it is the opposite. It is us who love Muslims very much. It is you who hate us very much. To the point your Quran says in chapter 9, verse 29, kill the Christians, kill the Jews. Do you see any Christian says kill the Muslims? No. Do you see any Muslim says kill the Christians? All of them agree. The Quran says so. So you are a hypocrite liar. This is what they do. They are the same as Democrats. They kill you and they go on your funeral and they play victims. Suddenly, we are the one who hate the Muslims. It's not their book says kill the Christians and the Jews and take their women and humiliate them. It's us. You see the hypocrisy? This cult is the satanic cult you know, when the gang, they kill the guy and they send the flower to his wife, that is Islam. The gang leader, he sent the flower to the wife. And he might attend the funeral. And he will be wearing sunglasses and he is sad. I wish I know who killed him. What a potato. In chapter 5, verse 51 says, Take not Christians and Jews as a friends. In chapter 5, verse 14 says, Allah will spread hatred between the Christians. And then the guy, he speak about hate. Islam is against hate, brother. We Muslim, we don't support hate. Islam is a pure hateful religion. Love is only exist in Christianity. The only one in the history of mankind who said, Love your enemy is Jesus the Christ. The only one. So how you lie in our face saying that we hate the Muslims. If I search right now videos made by Muslims about fighting the infidels and killing non-Muslims, I will find millions. If I search now for how many videos, beheading videos of a Christian beheading a Muslim, I will find zero.
But if I search how many videos of Muslim be hidden a Christian, I will find endless number. Your ugliness goes so far to the point you are proud about your crime. You don't even ashamed of it. But this is what they do always in YouTube. You know, they try to play victims. We are the good ones, you are the bad ones. Half of the wives of Muhammad are kidnapped from the Christians and the Jews. He raped them. He forced them into sex. Exactly. Islam nation, he is telling you the truth. Being not Muslim, you are against Allah. But Islam, this is, this is telling me that your God is a stupid God because he don't understand reality. That you Muslims cannot survive without the Christians. Right now, Emirat is asking Israel and America to step to defend their cities. They are not asking Allah for protection. So, if the Quran knew the future, he should know better that the Muslims, they need the Christians, and they cannot even protect their own Kaaba. So your God is an idiot. He taught hate, and he left you die with your hate. If the American right now, they take their hand away from the Middle East, the Iranian, the Persian, they will eat you alive. And you know it very well. And all those Sunni in the Middle East, they will be forced to become a Shia. As, as simple as that. In one day. As an example right now, the number of Sunni in Iraq is shrinking every year, an average of 1 to 2%. So in 20, 25 years from now, Iraq will be 100% Shia. No Muslim Sunni left. When you are going to call Hamza to embrace him, I don't know who is Hamza. However, give me his Skype, I will call him. And we do not need to embrace him. This guy is sitting underwear of women. It's embarrassing for him to be doing that business. A man who is a man, he will not open a store to sell women clothing. That is not a good business for a man, especially if he's a Muslim. He should have a woman selling the clothes for women, not a man. Did you ask yourself what kind of a dawa guy he is? He opened a store, only the customers are women. Is he embracing you by selling hijab to women? Can't he hire a woman to be talking to women? Why he is sitting there? Huh, he want to talk to women. I'm really impressed with the business. What is missing is to put underwears in the display. And those who claim that they are people who can refute us, here we go, give us your Skype, I will call you. Stop crying like a puppy. What do you mean, women? Well, a Muslim guy, he is not allowed to speak to a foreign Muslim woman. So when you open a store, you should have a woman working in the store so she can talk to women. This is what I mean. If you are slow, change your oil. Anything else? I think this Christian Prince guy is insecure. Notice how he is too scared to address Drax. Well, I'm too scared to address Drax because I don't know who's Drax. And I just said 1,000 times 
if I can address your God, Allah, and make shish kebab of your prophet, so who is Drax? Don't you see I'm making your God himself shish kebab? Who is this guy, Drax? He's not addressing Drax. What Drax can do for a living? What is that? Bully religion. Does the Quran chapter 1 verse number 1 prove Trinity or just names of Allah? Well, the, the verse number 1 in chapter number 1 prove nothing except that Muhammad is a thief. Because if Allah have three names, why Allah did not mention those three names from the beginning? Because the first time the, the word Ar-Rahman mentioned, it was almost after Muhammad he passed half of his life as a prophet. If you go in the Quran, you will find the following. When Muhammad, he mentioned the word Rahman first time, the Arab, they thought that he had now a new God. Why? Because he never ever mentioned the name of a Rahman, ever. So they asked him, who is a Rahman? You have two gods now? Look what he said. Say, O Muhammad, I invoke Allah or I invoke Ar-Rahman. Whatever name I invoke him, all the best names belong to Allah. So here you need to ask yourself, did Allah forget for the first 10, 12, 13 years of Muhammad's life to mention that his name is Ar-Rahman? Are you getting my point? Where was the name of Ar-Rahman? Shouldn't Allah Ar-Rahman, he mentioned Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim from the first verse in the Quran? So he waited half century and then he decided to tell Muhammad that my name is Ar-Rahman? Muhammad, he, he received a letter from a guy, his name is Rahman al -Yamama. And he responded to him, he says, in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. The Arab, they said to him, well, who is Ar-Rahman? The Raks, you are just a girl, and Islam does not allow you to mix with men. Just get out. Are you talking to us from behind the curtain? or under the curtain. Isn't it your prophet, he says, Naqisatu aqlin wa deen? Isn't it you the one who called me and we have you recorded and people laugh at you? And you are coming back? Isn't it this is your prophet, he says, that women have half a brain and they are stupid? So if you are defending Islam, you are defending that you are stupid, you won. I agree, you are. But doesn't mean all women are stupid. Those who believe in Islam are stupid. According to your prophet, women are stupid because they have their period. And you agree, don't you? I dare you to say I don't. A woman, she tried to argue with Muhammad. He said to him, what is the lack of our wisdom? What's the problem? Why we, are, why we have def the deficiency in our wisdom? He said to her, okay, okay, hold on. Isn't it true that isn't it the evidence in the Quran that one man is equal to two? He said, yes. Is it, isn't it true that you don't fast the same as we fast? He said, yes. He said, this is your deficiency. <laughs> because you have your menstruation. Can you believe it? So he forbid them from fasting when they have their menstruation and now they will go to hell because he forbid them from fasting when they have menstruation. Can you believe the stupidity? So don't bring me a Muslim woman here, please. Bring me men. A Muslim woman, she might defend this. She is already agreeing that she is a stupid. She is no match. 
And as you see, this is authentic. This is not, you know, uh, they, they can't play the game of da'if and the garbage, you know? According to Muhammad, most of women, they are going to go to hell. Why? Because they are menstruation, brother. They are half a brain. And the funny Muhammad, he said to them, uh, pay alms, pay alms. You will go to hell. The women, they start giving him their rings. This is the whole idea. You want to take their bracelet, their rings. Look, all of this, repeat it. Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, all the garbage. You have a deficiency in your brain. You have deficiency in your religion. And look how brave they are. I mean, how a, how a human being, he will say such a thing to his mother. I want you Muslims to make a print of this hadith and put it in the top of the bed of your mother. I challenge you. And you, you print this. This is the deficiency in your intelligence. And this is the deficiency in your religion. I want you to print it, put it in a frame, and say the Holy Prophet says so. Are you ashamed of it? Mr. Ritoro, obviously he's, re he's retarded. He says, yes, most of women, they will go to hell. Well, Mr. Ritoro, obviously your prophet is a stupid. Isn't it your prophet? He promised you each man, he will have 72 women in heaven at least. So how the most of women, they will go to hell if the majority of people of hell, they will have to be women then. Because the ratio of men to women is 72 to one at least. Your prophet is mental. Yes, brother, the majority of women, they will go to hell. I'm so glad. So you think because you have little penis, hardly we can see it. This is why you spend two hours to find it when you go in the bathroom. You will go to heaven because you have a penis. This is a man-made religion, made for the man. You do not need to be genius. In this religion, according to this religion, if you have a penis, you are, you are, you are good for God. If you don't have a penis, you go to hell. Well, the Israeli made you lose your penis long time ago. Prove me wrong. Penis God. I mean, what kind of a stupid religion? If a woman she have the women she have deficiency in her religion because she have menstruation, isn't it you who make her have menstruation? I mean, who is the donkey is talking? If menstruation is bad, and you are the one who cause it, and now she is guilty because of what you cause, isn't you who created her? And all of you Muslim men, you have menstruation. This is why you say you want to call me face, you debate me face to face. This is your menstruation. Any Abdul? This is a God who favored the penis. What Jesus said, he said, she and he, he, she and he, they will be like angels. So a man in heaven, he will not be better than women. A woman in heaven, she will not be better than a man. All of us, we are children of God. And if not the women, men are not exist. So stop being stupid. If you are so proud about yourself, well, you are born of a, of a woman. You are coming from her private part. So if her private part is a problem, you are one of the menstruation of the woman. You came from there. This is how silly this cult is. Where are you, Muhammad, he came from? He came from her, though his mother ears? 
Did she give birth to him with the blood too? Did that make Muhammad dirty and have deficiency? What a garbage cult. Any, anyone who don't, who look at women down, he don't understand that God, because he loves us, because he loved us as a human, he created Adam and Eve, so Adam will not be alone. And Eve is not created from out space. Actually, the Bible in the beginning, it's called both. Adam and Eve called them Adam. Both. Eve is Adam too. Or Adam mean a human. Um, anything else? And anyway, I challenge any Muslim, this is an honest challenge. If you really have the courage to print this and put it in the, in the top of your mother bed. If you don't, it means you are not proud about your prophet statement. I want you to teach your mother that she has deficiency. And she's a stupid. And she will go to hell. Uh, Christian, uh, uh, this is Lydia. You know, she came back. She's an idiot. Uh, obviously, you do not know the Bible. No, there is a Christian. There's women who they prophesy in the Bible. And the Bible, even Paul, he mentioned that. So you are ignorant in the Bible. The Bible we have book is it's called the Book of Judges, speaking about women, who they are judges. We have women who they are prophets. You can go right now, search in Google. You are just as stupid, Lydia. Don't come here again. You are very rude and very stupid. It takes you two seconds to find the answer in Google. But you are an idiot lazy who claim to be Christian. No, block her. Anytime this woman, she come here, block her. I don't want her. She's a fake Christian. Uh... Actually, the most respect was given to women, it was Mary. For God himself, he chose to come through a woman. What more respect can be given to a woman more than this? If God, he think about women bad and down, then how the Lord himself is born of a woman? Do you understand? If women are evil, if women are bad, if women are disgusting, if women, etc., then how your Lord, the one you worship, is born of a woman? So nobody gave respect to women as much as Jesus did, by act and by doing. Uh, yeah, I am in fire actually because I have a headache. <laughs> actually, I throw up before I go live, but I said, you know what? Doing what I need to do is better than okay. So I feel not, I don't feel good, but I feel better now. The Lord is, you know, is good. But uh, I throw up all the food I eat. I don't know what happened. Uh, All right. Anything else? Exactly, Amelia. The Lord, He said, He taught, He taught the men to love the women the same as a Christ. He loved the church. So 
Christ, he made the women equal to the church. The church is holy for us. Uh, My food did not come from Khaybar. No, you see, I don't eat in restaurant. I eat only a restaurant if I am traveling. I never eat in restaurant in a place I live in. I don't know a single restaurant in my town. And I will never eat in restaurant. But if I am traveling, you know, I have no choice. You know, you have to buy a sandwich, etc. Yeah, so it cannot be a food. I mean, it might be, I don't know, maybe it's damaged or something. I'm not sure. Oh. Uh, but it's not, we can't clean the Jews, right? Unless you are a Mohammedan, then you have to clean the Jews of everything. Can you spank my sheikh? Sure. Let your sheikh give him me his Skype and I will call him. What is my favorite food? Ah, you want me to tell you so you will put the poison for me as the Jewish woman did. <laughs> nice trick, nice trick. And then you go to Walmart and you buy rat poison. I get it. <laughs> Do you eat salad? A salad is my favorite food, actually. I love tomato and whatever comes with it. Oh, yes, I eat salad a lot. Anything else? I think because it's cold, we have a huge storm in USA now. It's crazy, it's a big, big storm, impacting most of the state. We will go to the Bible study soon. Um, um, I will see when which day we will start. You know. Uh, but maybe in a few days from now. You eat biryani? Oh. Well, you see the... The food is not really important. The food is made to survive, not to live for it. <laughs> But, you know, some people, they live for food. They die for it. And then they die because of it. Right? Um, thank you, Dragon. But maybe I'm going to have uh, some kind of uh, flu or something because I'm a little bit coughing. Actually, I'm wearing a jacket now, which I'm not used to do. Uh, but like if someone in public asks if you are CP, do you just tell them? I am sure that is scary in some ways. Well, it happened to me. I was once in the Philippines and I was in a coffee shop. And there was a guy, he had a Bible in front of him. He was taking notes. So, you know, I said, let me have a... Obviously, he looked like he's a Christian. So I said to myself, let me have a conversation with this uh, brother. So I said to him, so what are you studying? And, you know, he told me the Bible. And, you know, we start talking. And then he said, I know your voice. <laughs> he said, you do? I heard this voice before really he said and then he start and then he says to me are you christian prince you should see what he said you know like he was i said maybe said, what you know <laughs> and then he called his wife and he said guess who is here she said to him what 
he said please guess guess who is here with me right now in the table she said don't tell me christian prince i could not believe it you know it was like a candy camera i said this is set up how in the world the wife she knew that this is a christian prince i was like what because he put her in speaker he said yes this is a christian prince he says to him you are close in your mind you talk about him in the morning you talk about him at night you keep watching his videos and now you think he's with you he said, honest to God, he is with me. That's why she guessed that he is going to say Christian Prince. He said, who? Christian Prince? <laughs> and then I, he said, talk, 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 say something. I said, like, we'll say what? He said, he, he just like now, say, say anything. Did you hear him? She said, I heard little what, what he's. So I talk, I said, hello. She said, this is a joke. I said, how are you doing? I said, so you are really Christian Prince? I said, yeah what you know <laughs> and then he explained to me because he gave her a headache and she complained because he kept talking did you see what christian prince said did you see what he did, did you watch this video so she said to him okay i know who is with you now must be christian prince yeah <clears throat> it was a nice thing actually Once I did a seminar in the Philippines too. And uh, we have like a break from the seminar, or I don't I think the break or the end. Anyway, like we are not talking in the stage no more. And two girls they came and I was shaking hands with people, you know, introducing themselves. And there's two girls that are waiting for people to slow down coming to me. And then I said, uh, yes, how I can help you? You know? She said, I have a question. I said, What? I said, are you Christian Prince? <laughs> Because they don't introduce me as a Christian prince, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I said, uh, maybe. She said, see, I told you, this is his voice. She, so, so her and the other girl, they were saying, she told her, this is a Christian prince. She said, no. You know? She said, no, this is him. So after, you know, I finished talking, they come to me and they were like, they want to check. And she said, see, I told you. Yeah, I'm drinking actually. I hope I will not have a bad flu. Uh, yeah, you can, you know, I mean, you can deny who you are, but your voice is, uh, is a fingerprint. What was my seminar about? You can guess. I think it was about geology. What I would do a seminar about, what is now? Any question? Anyone? Thank you for the prayer. But you know, I'm not doing more seminars because, uh, you know, to prepare for a seminar, it takes them a few months, it takes a lot of money. Uh, I have to pay for a hotel and uh, especially if I'm going to a poor country, I don't let them pay even a penny. Uh, it takes too much work, you know. Uh, look, now we are here. We have a thousand thirty people. There's no need to prepare for a seminar. We have a seminar. Right? <clears throat> And you know, like there is really, there is wonderful Christians. Who they, those are the ones who invited me. Um, but I notice always it's hard to present somebody to speak about Islam in a church. 
because the topic is filthy. So, and because I don't sugarcoat things, you know, so when they present me to talk about the topic, the guy will, the priest, or let's say the, uh, the minister of the church, he will stand in the stage, he will say, um, today our guest is kind of a different kind of teacher. You know, he's trying like, to explain to them the disaster is going to happen. You know what I mean? Like preparing them for the, <laughs> you know, like he is kind of a different and like, you know, I'm saying to myself, by the time he present what I will say, the people will leave because he's scaring the hell of them. He is he kind of like, he is not like the ones we used to hear, like you don't sugarcoat things. So you might hear from him some things maybe you don't like or don't use to hear before, like blah, 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 you know. And I was saying to myself, give me the microphone before they leave, man. Like they will, they will go out. If you continue talking like this, people will leave, you know. So like, what, what this guy will talk about? Like people looking at each other. What will happen now? What is this? You know? Yeah. So like, you know, prepare yourself. He is not like the average normal, <clears throat> you know, he is a straightforward, you know, and then I could not take it, this guy, because he, he, he make it too much. So I went to the stage, I said, I think it's time for me to talk now, I guess, right? It's time for... <laughs> he said, this is exactly what I'm telling you, you see? <laughs> Let me introduce for you our brother here. Yeah. And then, you know, after we start talking, always most of those churches, they were afraid that people will not really have a good reception for the topic. But what happened always is the opposite. Each time I go to a church, I get invited by 10 more churches. Because what they do in the seminar, they invite ministers from other churches. So the second I go down from the stage, I'm done. I got right away invitation. When we can have you to come to our church? What date? Can we preserve it for this Sunday or this, etc.? Yeah. So in the beginning, in the beginning, people, they will be like uh, worry. Uh, you know, not sure. You know, because they don't know me much really. But then after, people love it. First, it's a comedy. You will see people dying from laughing, you know? Uh, nobody is uh, yawning, nobody is sleeping, not like in normal seminars, because this is a real comedy. Especially I am like in person there, you know? In Australia, going to be your coming seminar? Well, if you invite me to your church, I will go, right? I have no problem. Actually, once we went to a seminar and then they did not let me go. They don't want to let me go, so I have to stay the second day. I lost my uh, airplane ticket. They said, we will pay for the ticket uh, to, for you. Uh, because supposedly we have to leave. Like I have, I, they told me you can talk for, I don't know, like in 45 minutes, something like that. Then the 45 minutes became two hours, became the two hours became three hours. I mean, you know, that's endless. So, and I, told, I said to me, don't worry about the ticket, we will buy you one. Yeah. <clears throat> what about Canada? I don't know. I think Canada is not a friendly country to talk about this topic, is it? You have liberals controlling the country right now. Get me some conservative, I will go. No, you know, for me, I, I'm, I'm not worried about anyone. You see, I went, I went to a city. I don't know how many Filipinos here. There's any Filipinos? I went to a city, it's called Cagayan de Oro in the Philippines. You enter the airport, you are with ISIS. The mosque is in the corner, in the airport itself. The flag of ISIS is 50 meters away from the airport. You can ask any Filipinos. They told me don't go there. This is where terrorists are all over. And actually, not long after, ISIS took over of a city very close to it. It's called Marawi. I don't know if you heard the news. And it took the Filipino army, I think, more than a month to take back the town. So they told me don't go there. This is a lot of terrorists there, you know. And when I arrived to the airport, I found a bunch of Christians, brothers, and they are heavily armed, you know, to protect me. It's like, a, you know, bodyguards. 
They were nervous. I was not. You know, I trust my Lord. I go. I don't, you know, I'm not really worried. But for them, they were very worried. Uh, and it was a very nice seminar, actually. I have some pictures, actually, of the seminar. You know? <clears throat> Philippines will become an atheist country anytime soon? Well, that is impossible, because if you know the Filipinos, you know that this is not true. <clears throat> Filipinos, you know, uh, Filipinos are uh, religious people, and for sure there's good things about good things about every nation. But Filipinos are very nice people, very kind. They have they are good-hearted people, and they are religious. So when you say they will become atheist, I believe this is maybe one of the last countries in the world to become an atheist. Um, it's hard to follow the comments. Where is Actually, in the Philippines, I have many, many nice friends, and there are some of them, they are famous. Maybe some of you know them. Um, I don't know if uh, Filipinos here, they knew Mary Kiyamo. How many of you know, know uh, Brother Mary? Mary Kiyamo is an actor, and he is a TV host. And I was invited through him to the 700 Club in the Philippines, and I recorded a program with them. I'm sure the Filipinos here, they knew what, who I'm talking about. Very nice people. <laughs> Last time I went to the Philippines, I met with the many senators. I went with the foreign minister. I met with the founder of the Constitution of the Philippines. He is the vice president of the senators. I, I met with his son. He is a senator now. And he is a vice president of the senator too, which means his father was before him. Uh, I met with the spoken, the, uh, the, the spokesman of the president, Duterte. Uh, he's a spokesman. I mean, I met with many, many important people. Because at that time they were discussing uh, the peace agreement with the Muslims in the south of the uh, Philippines. And I went there for consulting. Uh, anyway. Can you talk about evil Prime Minister of Canada? You know, I mean, I, I, what I will talk about a Prime Minister of a country, you should talk about the country first, because who is the one who elect this stupid Prime Minister? Don't complain. You see, in America, we have two parties, right? And they are fighting over majority. And the second you join a party, we know who you are, what you think. As an example, if you join Democrat, that's mean you support homosexuality, uh, abortion. Uh, you support many things against Christianity. If you join the Republican, it's the opposite. But in Canada, why someone like this guy, he became a prime minister? I didn't find a reason. I mean, what is the qualification? So obviously Canadian, with my respect to all Canadian, they are not educated. Because when you choose a ruler, the ruler should have a qualification. And obviously these days, the ruler is a person who can do fashion show. Not a smart, intelligent, strong. If you are good looking, they will vote for you. If you are not, they will not. 
<laughs> and this is telling you how bad the education of the nation. What is the qualification of the person? How in the world this guy became a prime minister? So don't blame him, blame yourself. Where have you been in the election? You see now, let us say that Biden, he won the election. He did not steal it. So the American, they cannot complain. If you voted for this idiot, get ready and get, have fun. The price of gas is three times more. Price of food, four times more. Inflation is quite crazy. Price of housing, rent is so crazy. Have fun. In the Middle East, we say, there's a statement in Arabic, it says, your mouth blow in it and your hand tie it up. This is about two people went across the river. And in order to cross the river, which have a strong current, they have to use leather and they put inside it air, you know, to float. So each one of them, he put air in it and he tied it up. So in the middle of the river, one of them, he says, my float is leaking air. I will drown. The guy next to him, he says, what I can do to you? It is your mouth who blow it and your hands who tied it down. So don't complain. You give the power to the liberals, then don't complain for what the liberals do. Liberals, whatever they touch will destroy. <clears throat> The guy who attacked the synagogue yesterday, the liberals start defending him. This guy, he's under stress. He's suffering from mental illness. You know? Each time a Muslim, he do a terrorist attack, the first one who stand to defend him is the liberals. Uh, straight... Warring straight. I don't know how to say your name, my friend. Straight. I say straight, whatever your name. Thank you, my friend. God bless you. <clears throat> you know, when Biden he caught what Muhammad said, and can't you tell that mean that Biden is an evil man? Or what he cares is to win the election? He needed the little vote of uh, Muslims in Michigan. They are not really too many. But he wanted them. He caught what Muhammad said. But what, what Muhammad said is a terrorist quote. They are the same, my friend. If there is any Chinese horrible, horrible store, I don't know. I don't go to stores... Um, anyway my friend uh, we as a Christian we should not complain and don't do action if you see something not right then fix it so when there is an election that's why I don't like those Christian priests who say we don't involve with politics and then they cry for what's happening so your duty as a christian to stand against evil doesn't matter who is the one who you are standing against if somebody want to support abortion you go vote against it so the first thing you do you don't vote for a person you vote for what he is supporting so if he support abortion you vote against him his name is trump his name is joe biden who care You know what I mean? So always stand with what is right, not with a person. Uh, what do you think of any, if any, Habib of Islam very friendly to Christians? First of all, all those they call themselves Habib, they are a scam because none of them is from the children of Muhammad. Zero. 
It's a scam. And the scam people do what scam people do. Don't worry, guys, about my me. I will be fine. I hope by the morning will be fine. I don't get sick, really. I, very rarely. I mean, last time I got sick, God knows when. So it's okay to get sick once in a while. We can't complain. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> you know, you see those liberals, they defend uh, animal rights, right? But they want to kill babies. I mean, what, what's wrong with this? What kind of mentality you have? You know, this is because of selfishness. People, they want to just go have sex. And then they don't want to be responsible for their act. That's the whole story. Even cats don't kill their babies. Cats. And you know, if a woman, she get rid of her child, trust me, she will live in pain for the rest of her life. You might think it's just, okay, so I mean, what, what will happen? He's not even born. But you will see the consequence. You will be in pain. You cannot forgive yourself, even if you are an atheist. Why Jesus says, why you call me good? He was asking the person how you know I am good because Jesus later he says I am the good shepherd so Jesus when he said why you call me good when only God is good but Jesus said I am the good shepherd so he is the good God always when you want to understand what Jesus said you don't take a sentence and you forget about the rest Unless you are just trying to play games. Like if I say to you, why you call me smart? Only God is smart. And then after two minutes, I, I say to you, I'm the smart one. <laughs> Can you say anything good about Islam? My friend, there's nothing good in good in lies. Lies is lies. But always lies have to be mixed with some, you know, the same as poison. If somebody want to kill somebody, do he put the poison in the toilet seat? No. He put it in a dish. And usually in a dish, you favor. Like the Jewish women, when she put the poison for Muhammad, she put it in the shoulder of the goat, which Muhammad liked. So if somebody want to poison you, he will put it, his poison, in the best food you like. This is why Muhammad, he says, I believe in Mary, that she was virgin. He will go, this is good. That's very good. Hmm? I believe in Moses. That's very good. The rest is garbage. Any other question? Anyone, he can take any phrase Jesus said and he tried to make it something mean the opposite. All right. <clears throat> what a Christianity perspective of animal right. Well, you see, the, the, the thing is called right. I don't think it really exists. What exists is the sense of good and evil. The sense of good and evil. Animal right is something we created, this, uh, you know, a phrase. But if you have a sense of good man, why you want to hurt an animal? There's no reason. Are you evil? Animals they feel. So even animals, 
when they let us say a wolf even the wolf when he attack a deer he don't attack the deer to hurt him he attack the deer to eat him and when the wolf is not hungry he don't attack no more he sleep next to the deer if you if you wish so even the animals they have the sense of not to do things unless there is a reason so when a human being he hurt an animal he's out of reason He's being evil. We as a Christians, we do not need something called animal right. We need to do what is right. And what is right is, why you want to hurt anyone? If you need to eat, then you kill a chicken, but you are not killing the chicken to torture the chicken. You need food. But it's the, the purpose is not the killing. But if you are a sick person, you can start taking the feather of the chicken one by one when she's alive. That is evil. Why you want to do that? Oh, I want to eat. We'll kill the chicken and then take the feather. Do you understand, my friend? So, your action have to be in match with ethic. And ethic can go to everything, not only for animals. Even if you go to the bathroom, let's just say public bathroom. You enter there, it was clean. Why do you want to leave, there, leave it dirty? So the one come after you will be disgusted by your filth. So we do not need somebody to tell me what is the right of an animal. We need to know and learn to do always what is right. And what is right is not to hurt, even if it's an animal, because animals have a feeling. He feel pain. He have a blood. The same as you get hurt. If you shoot an animal, you shoot it to eat it, not for fun. You should not shoot for fun. Because then this is not really just to find what you do. <clears throat> my friend this is uh this is a fiction what you are saying that uh, in certain religion god he came as a man uh you know always people they try to mix things up and even they lie about what they say. Let us say there's a many religion believe that God came as a man. What does this have to do with us? What what this have to do with anyone? This is their belief. If you are trying to say to me that we copy from them, you will find that they're, even their books is written after Christ. At the same time, what you are saying is not really accurate. I find it very embarrassing that people, they say things, I mean, did you check what you are saying in the screen or you are just making things up? People make things up. They love to make things up. The same when they talk about the Christmas. That people celebrate the Christmas before. And they start quoting for you names of other gods. But this is false. Christmas is a Christ service. That's why it's called a Christmas. And then they start quoting names and stories. Would you say the Mahdi is Antichrist, my friend? There's nothing it's called Mahdi. This is one of the fiction stories of Muhammad. 
Muslims religion have tons of fiction stories Mahdi is a person supposedly is born from a woman some they say her name is Maryam some they say her name is Nargis and she gave birth to him from her thigh and this guy if he said if he fell down in his ass he say Allahu Akbar and he never farted he never do shit it's just stupid stories so don't put your nose there there's nothing but fart You will notice that the Muslims, they try to copy a lot of, of things from Christianity. As an example, the Mahdi story. Muhammad, he said, there will be 12 Imams after me. He's trying to copy the 12 disciples of Jesus. Isn't it obvious? Obvious. Right? And then the Muslims, they try to squeeze those Imams to make them fit with the number. If Muhammad, he said 11, they will make them 11. If he say 20, they will make them 20. There is a website for a view of house and wash. Well, I don't know about website, but there is books. You can get the copy of house and wash. House is the most popular, is given for free by the Saudi. But I think if you get the Quran from Morocco, the one they use there is Warsh. Okay. Any other question? You know, once I saw a video by a Christian minister, and you know, he speaks Chinese, and he was explaining the Chinese alphabet. And you believe it or not, the story of Adam, the story of the flood of Noah, is exists in the Chinese alphabet. So, if you are a person who is trying to find Christianity, you will be amazed. You will say, well, obviously, the story of Adam and Noah, Noah is true to the point even exists in the alphabet of the Chinese or you can say well obviously those Christians are copying from the Chinese choose one <laughs> um. anything else It's always, you know, a human being, always he try to find what he is looking for. As an example, I am a person that's against Islam, right? So what I do, I try to find the stupidity of Muhammad. But at the same time, if Muhammad is not a stupid, I cannot find the stupidity. You know what I mean? The other say I'm driven by my agenda. And if I cannot find something convincing that it's stupid, that means my agenda is silly. But the same can be for you. You try to find something maybe stupid according to you in the in the in the teaching of Christ. But I challenge you. There's no such a thing. But you can challenge me the same challenge I make for you about Islam. So you can have your agenda. And I can have mine. But at the end of the day. What you have is going to be placed on the table. What I have is going to be placed on the table and let people judge. The truth will set you free. Some people are like a mother. You know the mother? She look at her son, she find him the most handsome man. Other women, she will see the son of this mother. He look bad. He don't look handsome. So you need, in order, in order to understand uh, the truth you should not be the mother and you should not be the neighbor who hate this mother you should be a person trying to discover what is good and what is bad and then whatever you find in your study it is your find people don't do that people they have a previous agenda you know for me 
I did not go against Islam right away. You know, I grew up with Muslims. We go in school together. I visit them in their houses. They come to me. Actually, when I go to Muslim houses, I sit with their sisters. I am the only one actually allowed to sit with their sisters. If a Muslim, he come right away, the sisters hide. They trust me. You know, and I never, I never, ever broke their trust. So I take their sisters as my sisters. Uh, but I'm not against Islam for no reason. I became against Islam after studying Islam. After knowing very well how bad it is. Do you still communicate with Sam Shamoon? No, my friend, I don't communicate with anyone. But he's my brother. Um, so if you are a person like you, you have you have like a pre say against Christianity, I advise you to go and read the Bible, read the teaching of Jesus, and you will see how amazing it is. I mean, love your enemy. You see, the humans they spend the trillions of dollars every year for what? For weapon. If we take all of us, all mankind, one sentence of Jesus, love your enemy, this earth will turn into heaven. Just one sentence, not the whole book. And I challenge anyone to find me, like, you know, there's many philosophers, big names, small names, whatever. Find one, he teach you to love your enemy. You will not find any, because this is kind of impossible. This is very noble, too high to be taught to a human being. A human being is very aggressive creature. A human being, he wanna take everything what is belong to him and what it does not belong to him. A human being is very jealous person. A, a, a mother can be jealous from her daughter. Can you believe it? A sister can be jealous from her sister. A man, he can be jealous of his brother. This is how corrupt a human is. And then you come in a time where slavery, war, killing, and then you say to those people in front of you, love your enemy, plus those who curse you. That is a revolutionary teaching. Uh, El Poroido saying love your enemy does not make sense obviously you don't understand then what love your enemy mean and this is what we say about shallow people love your enemy in Christianity mean to invite them to believe in loving the enemy which means changing their faith from being evil to be good it's not about you punish me and I will not punish you back so when Jesus he said if somebody hit you in your right cheek, give him the other one. Jesus was speaking about a Roman law, which was exist at that time. If you hit in the left cheek, or, you know, whatever the law is, every country have different law. It can be weird for you, but this is how it is. So if you hit a person in a cheek, in a certain cheek, you go to jail. So what Jesus was saying to them, don't be evil. Don't do what they do. He hit you. There's a police. You live in a state. There's a government. There's a court. There's a judge. There's soldiers. Let the law work. Don't be evil. As simple as that. But Jesus never said that somebody can kill you and you don't defend yourself. Jesus never said if somebody came to rape your wife, you stay watching because you love your enemy. It is the same Jesus who said, the one who don't have a sword, go on by one. They said to him, we have two swords. He said, that's enough. Enough to what? To defend themselves. 
Peter himself was next to Jesus all the time and he have a sword with him. So you have a wrong understanding of loving an enemy. Loving the enemy does not mean my enemy can come, enter my house, rape my wife, and I make food for him. If a person want to do that to me, I will make him shish kebab before even he unzip his pant. So you have a very wrong understanding of the Bible. This is about civil society. They have a law. They have a system. So don't take, don't do justice by your hand. As simple as that. But if you are not in a civil society, then you use your hand to defend yourself. Did I answer you, Mr. Alberido? People, they come with their own understanding as they wish, you know. Love your enemy does not make sense. No, it makes sense. The first, the first thing loving the enemies will do to you is will, you know, release you from your hatred. Let us say somebody did something bad to me. Hmm? If I am a person who loves, let us say, just to give you an example, let us say somebody, a brother of you, a cousin of you, a friend of you, it doesn't matter who. He shot your son. I mean, how bad it can be. He shot your son. He killed your son. Literally. Then you cannot forget about it. Even if the person, he die, even he went to jail, or even he been executed. But you cannot forget it. That will be the most painful life for you. Because you could not forget about it. So love your enemy is a medicine for the person who suffer from hatred. For hatred is the same as a poison. Kill the one who carry it. You see, if you hate me, you will suffer from your hatred, not me. I don't feel your hatred. You're just a crazy guy. There's many people, they hate me to death here. But I go sleep, I'm fine. They hate me. I don't hate them. So they are, they dream about killing me. They are not enjoying life. They are in pain. So the one who cannot forgive and he cannot forget is the one who will suffer. So loving your enemy is done for you first, not for the enemy. So you can live better. You can enjoy life. So when Jesus, like in Matthew, he says, you heard that I said to you, you know, love your enemy, love your neighbor, and hate your enemy. This is what they say. He said, I tell you, love your enemy. Jesus, he changed the direction. That's why Jesus said, Sabbath was made for the man, not the man made for Sabbath. So when the Lord, he says something to us, the aim is you before your enemy. A person who loves his enemy is a happy person, for he have nothing inside him to destroy his spirit. He have no worry, he have no nothing occupying his heart and his head of hatred. He's free. Islam is an enemy. Should love Islam? This is very, my friend, I don't know. Are you being silly? Islam is not a person. Islam is a lie. So we are not allowed to love lies. But we love Muslims. Don't mix things. Do we love lies? If you love lies, then you don't love your enemy. Because only true person can practice such a thing. Love your enemy.
So we don't love Islam for Islam is a hateful cult. Interweighted. I don't know what the word mean, my friend, my tribal chief. Let me see what this word mean. Interweighted. Excuse my English. As you know, English is not my first meaning. Interweighted. Inter introverted a person person with the qualities of a personality type known introversion which means that he, uh, they feel more comfortable focusing in their inner thought and ideas rather than have you know happen externally you know sound like a philosophy thing is that something you focus on yourself like yoga Is that what you are trying to say to me? I'm just trying to find out what this word means, really. Why you carry a gun? Why not? I have guns, not only gun. It's my hobby. I believe every man should have a gun. If I have a daughter, and she want to marry a man and this man never carry a gun I will say to him go join the army first come back as a man and come and take my daughter I want a man he can defend his house protect his family and to be a good man I don't want a man to carry a camp in his jeans pocket as simple as that. But carrying a gun does not make you a criminal unless you use it as a criminal. Right? It's not guns who kill, my friend. It's people. Introverted means no so no friend or social skills. Self, uh, okay. What do you see? I don't know about friends. I tell you that, first of all, there's nothing called really friends. There's nothing called friends. Friends are people who you take them after you try them. And most of us, we have a friends who we never tried. So a person who depends on himself, he is more safe than a person who depends on friends. Friends, you might find one in your lifetime. You might find two. They are good. But mostly, it's not the case. So you better always focus in, in, in your own, not on people's help. Always expectation bring pain. Expectation bring pain. So, uh, I believe your friends can be something painful, especially if they betray you. You know, I like we have here now, we have people here, they love me. I don't know them. I don't know what I call them. I call them friends. I don't know what to call them. I know that there's people I can go and I can sleep in their houses and not worry about my life. I don't know what to call them but I say that there is people here really they open their heart for you they are not your friends they are your family so I believe that you can find people who they can be your family yet they are not your friends they never been your friends they can be better than you more than your friends and your cousins and your mother and your father who you are born from their blood. There's a story in the in the Bible about the one who was injured and nobody wanted to help him, right? They left him alone in the street. So don't focus on a friend. Try to try to find a family who loves you for nothing you have.
there's people that love you because they are you know they are wonderful people there's people who will help you just because they love to help they don't even know you in the other day when my microphone was not working i received an email in patreon from one of you i don't know i don't know if he's here this guy he donated five dollars he hardly can donate a dollar maybe and then he sent an email to me says cp i want to buy you a microphone and obviously the guy he don't have money i told him my friend i will fix it cancel your donation i don't know if he's here he can tell you if you think about it a person who hardly can donate five dollars and then he made a donation of 130 dollars not 30 dollars i think this is the number he, he he decided to donate as he told me in the email why do you want to do that do you give your money for nothing you don't know who's this guy why a person will jump to take from his pocket and obviously he's poor I don't think he's that rich so when somebody you know he do such an act you can tell that there is family you belong to and they care for you even though you never met them you never know them so I don't have a friends but I have a big family which one is better so I say to you my friend try to find family not friends and those can be found through life you do church charity you do you will find loving people but I don't I don't encourage you to be alone or to be a lonely person You will finish your Quran translation this year. Well, I, I should take uh, some time not to come in YouTube at all so I can finish it. <clears throat> I have to stop coming here because this YouTube take a lot of my energy. Actually, you know, like I wish I can go and visit all those people who invite me and I receive many invitations from people. But what you can do, what we do is very dangerous. It's hard to trust people through the internet, even though I know there's tens of thousands of people. They love to meet with me, to have a coffee with me. Uh, but what we do, the nature of what I do is very ugly. Shalom, true stranger. What is 666? Well, you know, you can go and just make some search in Google about what 66, and then you will see the verses in the Bible speak about it. But I believe that the number 666, it might be misunderstood as a number. It might be. See, always there is revelation is meant to understood when they when things happened not before they happen so when they happen then you will find out this is what the verse is saying this is why it's about the future <clears throat> i'm helping so many people well i am you know i'm i don't know if we can say i'm helping many people it's i mean i am being helped too this is how life is. You see, how I how I know how I have my knowledge. If there is a one of us is born with knowledge, no. We study, there is teachers, we learn, we learn from others. So a person who take, he never give, he is not following Christ. A person who always take, he never give. 
he does not even exist and nobody will remember him so time will go and you and me we will die the bible says let the dead bury the dead that's what jesus said people don't understand until now because everybody is dead it's just a matter of time so when you go people either they will remember you for ugly things you do or you did or they will remember you for wonderful things you did if you did nothing of them nobody will remember you you know what i mean so if you did nothing special nothing so good so special uh, maybe your son will remember you for a few years uh, your daughter will put some flowers in your grave uh, your grandson will forget about you bye bye but if you are a person who did something unique during your lifetime your name will be written in heaven not only in earth for the lord will recognize people from their fruits this is why he said from their fruits you shall know them And this is why I say, we better have a fruit, otherwise we will not be recognized. And by the way, having fruits, you know, it can affect everything in our life. I will tell you a story, maybe it's just silly, but it's, it's going to teach you something. There's a, there's a guy, he got married, he got married, and... Uh, one day his parents come to visit him. They knock at the door. The wife, she looked from, you know, the eye in the door. Told him, don't answer. Those are your parents, I don't want them. This man obviously is a potato. He did not dare to open the door. So his wife, she would not be upset. One day, his wife, she gave birth. And she gave birth to a daughter. This man, he was so happy. Those are Arab men. They don't like women. They don't like girls. They like to have boys. So she looked at him. She said, why you are you so excited? It's a girl. He said, well, at least one day, if I go to visit her, she will open the door for me. I don't want a son to be like me. When I go to visit him, he will look from the eye and his wife will tell him, they are your parents. You open the door for your parents, I don't dare to open the door for my parents. Here you notice how a human being can be awkward, can be stupid. How in the world your parents come to your door just because your wife she don't like them you don't open the door so how many of us the Lord he come to our door and we don't open the door for him because maybe we are shy to say we believe in Jesus or we have a friends who they are atheists they will make fun of me What you do is going to be done to you. If you don't open the door, the door will not be open to you. As simple as that. So I hope this little story can teach you something. If someone wishes to die and pray to God for death, is it wrong? Well, I don't think it's wrong, but uh, the question why? As long as you're just a prey. You don't do something bad, you know? You don't commit suicide. Let's say you are not happy with your life and you pray, God, take me. It's okay, no problem. Because at the end of the day, if God answers your prayer, eh, good for you. It's what you wish. But the question, why you want to do that? No. I will say, uh, 
I pray that the Lord will not make my life long if I am sick. Because I will not be able to provide the work I can do. If I cannot move, if I cannot talk, I don't want to, you know. So then I pray the Lord, he will take me. Because my, my, my duty is over. But uh, I believe that you have work to do, my friend. Don't let stress make you give up. Because if you start giving up, you, you will lose everything. <clears throat> if ex-Muslim boy hide and deny Jesus from his Muslim family because of them to do something bad to him, is that sin? Well, according to the Bible, yes, he should not do that. You know, the Lord, he says, the one who deny me, I will deny him. So we as a Christian, we don't believe in taqiyya. We don't believe in lying for protection. So this is sin. But I say that the Lord is all loving and he can forgive sin, right? So you can fix it. You can repent. You can announce yourself. If you ever became scared, you know, cowardness control you because you fear for your life, you can always fix it. Because if anyone who does sin, then that's it. His life is over. Well, all of us, then our life is over because all of us, we commit sin. All of us, we committed sin in the past. And I assure you, we will commit sin in the future. Uh, yeah, I will finish the translation of the Quran for sure. God is, you know, my helper to finish it. Do you think that Jesus will come back soon because there is an earthquake and corona? You see, uh, uh, if you read the Bible carefully, <laughs> you will find that the Lord, he will come like a thief. That doesn't mean he's a thief. How does a thief come? He come when people are asleep, which means people are unaware. So if people are expecting him, I don't think he is coming in the time you expect. You know what I mean? And having an earthquake, well, always there's earthquake. Having corona is nothing. We have a, we have the, the yellow, whatever they call it, before, killed half of the population of England. Right now, what? How many die? Nothing. Nothing really compared to the population of the world. Really, really nothing. Actually, most of people who die, even they put them as corona, but they are not even die from corona. So uh, I don't see really, I mean, I know that some people, they love to talk about the, the day of judgment because this is a point of attraction and people, they love it. I, I know a Christian guy, he keep going, prophecy, uh, attack on Israel, you know, and this is how people come and etc. We, we are not like this, you know. The first thing you need to remember that if the Lord is with me, who could be against me? Which means, if it's judgment day, if it's not judgment day, that is the last of my worry. If I am ready, then why I want to worry about judgment day? Let judgment day come when the Lord he want. Whenever it is. Don't wait for it. It's coming. Now, a century, a thousand, a million years, no problem. Right? What do you think about Amish people? I think they are nice people. I don't know, I saw nothing wrong from them. I know many Amish. Can you debate with Indonesian in Arabic? Sure. Yeah, bring me Indonesian to debate with me in Arabic. 
he will be sorry. That will be even funny. Indonesian speaking Arabic. Maybe he claimed to speak Indonesian in front of Indo I mean Arabic in front of Indonesian, but with me he will he will look like a sandwich, like a falafel. Orthodox Muslim dependent women are young age at young age become a Christian at heart. My friend, I don't know how what to say to you. I mean, every human being he have different life living situation, right? So giving advice through the internet is so easy. It's like somebody is suffering from hunger. I tell him, brother, you know, have patience, but that's not really what he need. So, uh, a woman, she became a Christian and her family, they forced her to marry a man because they heard that she is converting to Christianity. I don't know what is the situation. I don't know even if there's a way out. You know, maybe it's impossible. However, the Lord is always will be with you. Don't worry about those who destroy the flesh, but those who destroy the spirit. People around the world, they go through a lot of pain. Children sleep under the bridge. People have no heat. Children have to work to feed themselves. Giving advice is useless when you see the pain of those people. This earth we live in is painful, my friend. However, the Lord, he blessed the poor and he will reward them in his own way. What about your books to give your books for free for Africa? But we are giving our books for free to everybody. What Africa? Is Africa special? We give it to the Indonesian, the African, whoever, download it. I don't give my books for free for a specific people. No. Maybe we go by languages. And my friend, you have all my videos for free here. And here I explain myself way better than a book. What do you want more? I spend half of the day with you. If you try to make the videos right now, we made today, 3 hours 49 minutes until now. Those will make a book. Stop lying or my government, they will block you. Well, my friend, if your government blocked me, and this is what Pakistan did and Saudi Arabia, that is a clear sign that I'm not lying. Because if I am lying, why you want to block me? People will laugh at my lie. <laughs> why you fear a lie? You see, a religion who fear a lie, obviously that religion is a lie. This is how weak your religion you need a protection because your religion is a fraud. That is the truth. Why you are scared of somebody's lying? What is what will happen to you? What kind of God you need protection from government? Can this God refute this guy? Obviously, your God is a potato. Uh, have you ever uh, gone teaching Filipinos about Islam during your visit to Philippines? Yes, I did many seminars and thousands of people attended. And actually, there's some seminars were very small. I remember once there was a seminar. I don't know what was the occasion that people could not come. So there was only a few people. This is the only one. I have only a few people in the seminar. But usually, a lot of people come.
And actually, when I do seminars, they don't uh, advertise it. Only one seminar, they put uh, Christian prints. Only one seminar. The rest, they did not uh, uh, say. Actually, I have a picture of it. They put a big sign. You know, like uh, those long signs. You know, they put it in front of the church. I don't know what the topic it was. I can find the picture. I have a picture for it. Actually, you know what? Let me find the picture. Hold on. <clears throat> you want to see, guys? <coughs> I'm sorry, my boys. <coughs> Let me try to find. I hope my internet will help. I'm trying to find the pictures. Give me some time. Okay. Let us see where we can find those pictures. <clears throat> You know, and I have a person who don't take pictures of himself. So you will not find really pictures of me. You will find pictures of what I do. Let us see. Let us see. Where, where, where? Uh, here I found a picture actually. Uh, let us see this one. Well, I found a picture here. Let us see. Give me a second. Take a screenshot. This is from a seminar I did in Cagayan do Oro. And actually, you will find right away there's Muslims attending the seminars. <clears throat> Give me a second. All right, let's put this picture here. Uh, there was many Muslims actually attending the seminar. Anyone here from Cagayan de Oro? For sure, if you are from that area, you will know the church I went to. And as you see here, there's a Muslim, she is wearing hijab, Muslim women. I don't know if you can see her. You know, they attend the seminar, and there was hundreds and hundreds of people. Let us try something else. <clears throat> <laughs> anyway, I mean there is pictures, but uh, I just I wanted to find that picture when they they use they say the Christian prince because usually they don't advertise using the word Christian prince when I go. <clears throat> I'm trying to find it. Christian Prince, Christian Prince. 
to know we did not see it. I think this is boring, right? To make you wait for to see a picture. Okay. Until now, I did not find it, but it should be there somewhere. <clears throat> I don't take you know really pictures, but I, that one I took because it was uh, kind of uh, unique. Where, where, where? <clears throat> well, it looks like I could not find it. I know. Nowhere to be found. Interesting. But it should be here actually, I'm not sure why I can't find it. I hope I did not delete it by mistake. Ah, I found it. <clears throat> It's a long, long, uh, so I will try to show it in the screen, but it's a very long print. It's like three meter high. Let us do this now. I took a screenshot of it. All right. So this is the thing here. Ah, so the title was Understanding Islam. Understanding Islam. Then we have to go down. Everything you wanted to know <clears throat> about Islam, but we're afraid to ask. Uh, and this was March 25th, Saturday at 8 a.m multi-purpose hall because they have many you know places uh, with author uh, and apologist expert christian prince admission is for free sorry it took us some time to find it but we found it it was a very long i mean <laughs> that's why i took a picture of it you know, i found it like it was ridiculous long big you know so people can see from far away and uh, you know uh, because usually people who attend seminars there's fees so I, I insisted to make it clear that nobody should pay anything when they uh, join us <clears throat> yeah so understanding islam everything you wanted to know about islam but we are afraid to ask March 25th. This is, this is the good thing about pictures. Here now we remember when even the date was for this thing. <clears throat> uh, we, I have Muslims, as I showed you, actually once a Muslim, he stood, he says, what do you think 
I heard that you, uh, you know, you, uh, you know, support Israel. What do you think about Israel taking the land of the Muslims? So I said to him, hey, Abdul, do you have the Quran? He said, yes, I have the Quran. Said, okay, open Quran chapter 5, verse 21, and read it for us. He said, what? He said, open Quran chapter 5, verse 21, and read it for us. He opened the Quran. He did read it. I said, see? It was Allah who gave the land to the Jews. This is not your land. You should see his face. <laughs> he was so excited, you know, like, supposedly like he's, he will play victim now, you know, like, you know, the, the, you know, the Jews, they took our land. I said, this is not your land. It's Allah who gave it to the Jews. This is your Quran. Are you against the Quran? You should see how he said. I was so disappointed. He, he thought I'm going to say to him the Bible says etc. You know, well, he could not believe it. The Bible, the Quran says so. Yes, your Quran. Read it. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. <laughs> he was very disappointed. I, I, I feel sorry for him. Like his head was so like so excited when he started asking, and then he was so unexcited when he read did read his book. <clears throat> yeah, but you know those seminars are really costly, and I prefer not to do them. You know, a country like the Philippines is a poor country with my, my, my love to all the poor people, which means I have to pay for my uh, ticket, for my hotels, for my travel, uh, for everything, you know. Uh, and I mean, today we can do it in the internet. There's no need for me to go anywhere. Right? <clears throat> it is costly, it is tiring, it takes too much work. And here we go, we can take it, we can do it here. Like we have now uh, 1,000 people. Yeah, but for me, it's not a vacation time, really, because uh, it's not a fun vacation time. Vacation is vacation. Have your relationship with the KKK? Well, if I was a Muslim, I would have a relationship with the KKK because Islam is a KKK. Islam is the religion of the KKK. Allah, he said, he created the white people to go to heaven and he created the black people to go to hell. You don't believe me, Mr. KKK? Supposed to you are being smart? I can show you. It's your God who is a KKK. And not only that, the Quran says that Allah, he will make all the believers white and all disbelievers black. KKK God. Actually, your God is Kaka, not only KKK. Kaka in the Middle East means Pupu. I find it very funny that they follow a white supremacist God and then they speak about the KKK. Is any this is your book? Mr. Kaka? Is that your book? Chapter 3, verse 106. Hmm? I go silence now. Anyway. <clears throat> Islam and the KKK is no better. Both they believe in white supremacist. Both are racist, filthy. Both are unjust. And not only that, 
The Quran says that the Muslims are the best and the rest are animals. If you go in the hadith, you will see Muhammad encouraging the Muslims to go for a hunt. What is the hunt involved? Non-Muslims. Bring them the chains around their neck. Because the Muslims, they believe that they are the white supremacists and everyone else is under their shoes and the hadith in front of your eyes. That is false, big man. This is a lie. Islam is the most ethnic diversity. Uh, well, show me when the last time you have an African Imam of the Kaaba. The first time ever they have a black guy is an Imam for the Kaaba. It was when Obama became a president. The King Fahd, he put an Imam as a black man for two weeks and then they throw him out. When the Muslim, they said to Muhammad, are we going to obey a slave? And he is Ethiopian. He says, obey your leader because he needed him for war. He's a black, he's a strong, he's don't, but he don't respect him. He said, obey your leader, even if his head is a raising head. And you are telling me Islam is not racist? Muhammad was giving the Torah. Did he say, I believed, or he said, I believe? My friend, the Torah is in the front of his hand, it's under his hand. So I believed. He's talking oath in the, in the book, in his hand. What I believed. <clears throat> How many private calls you make? With Muslims per day. Uh, you, you mean some people they I want to talk in private? Not every day I talk because not every day I go on Skype. But sometimes people they ask me, they have a friend or in you know, a Muslim, you know, or a woman, her husband, she uh, trying to convince him. She's a Muslim too, as an example last time, if you remember. So it, it happened from time to time, but not every day. Otherwise, I don't really go every day in Skype. I go on Skype usually when I am live on air. Who are the real Arab? Badu or white? First of all, I know I don't know how many times when you repeat Arab is a word mean people who live in the desert. Doesn't matter who they are. Arab is not an ethnic. This is why you will see that they have different uh, look, different hair, hair, different height, different shape. But why? Because simply they are not an ethnic. But all of them, they are white. Well, ultimate fault. He is not a Muslim because he knew. He is a Muslim because he didn't know. <clears throat> okay, here. Malki Sadiq, he have no father, he have no mother. He have no beginning, no end. Always when you try to read something, Think about it. A person who have no father, he have no mother, he have no beginning, who have no end, you must say he must be God then. No. They don't know who is his father. They don't know who is his mother. They don't know where he came from. They don't know where he go. That's all. So we do not know where he came from, beginning. We do not know where he go, end. You don't know who is his mother. It doesn't say it's not about he don't have mother, he have no father. Don't put too much air in the tire. You will make it ex you know, explode. All right.
If we ask uh, Mr. Uh, uh, big Man, is it true that your God, he will make all non-believers black? Yes or not, Big Man? I will be waiting for his answer. Big man, is it true that Allah will make all non-believers black? I'm not going to wait for your answer. We have it in the Quran. The answer, yes. So if your God is not racist, why you don't make all the believers black people then? What about Allah make all the disbelievers white and all the believers black? Alright guys? Why Allah he chose the color of the white for the believers and the color of the black for the bad one in the Quran? Because he's racist. And we have a hadith where Muhammad he said that when Allah he created the white people, he hit the right shoulder of Adam, and right always present the, the, the good ones. He hit the right shoulder of Adam, and from there, the offspring of the white people came like white ants. And he said, you go to heaven, and I don't care. And he hit the left shoulder of Adam, and black people came like, white, like black uh, circle ants. And he said, and you go to hell, and I don't care. Is that me statement or my ear prophet? It's your prophet. So most of them, they try to fabricate duct tape, try to make Islam as a, a multi-ethnic. The fact is not. Muhammad, he made fun of the Asian people too. According to Muhammad, the people of Gog and Magog, they are Asian, and they are specifically the Turkish, the Mongolian. And the reason the Turkish, they are not behind the wall, which Allah, he ordered his messenger, Alexander the Great, to build. Because at that time, the Turkish, they were not doing the mischievement. But they are from Gog and Magog. If you don't believe me, big man, call me. I will show you the reference. I will make you read it yourself. And obviously, by making such a statement, Muhammad is a false prophet. He do not know that the Turkish later will become Muslims. And he made, of their, he made fun of their face, he made fun of their eyes, he made fun of their shoes, he made fun of their clothes. He described them, they are people how, uh, as if you hit them with the, with, the, with the hammer. So. Uh, <clears throat> we can find you tens of hadith but anyway and then the Muslim they fabricate a hadith it's called the, the last sermon which is a false hadith and this is the irony about the Muhammadan when they want the false hadith rejected hadith they say it is uh, accepted when they want the correct hadith, the authentic, they say it's not authentic. Right? Anyway, I think we have enough for today. And as you see, supposedly I don't feel good and I should not really stay long. But you guys, you make me stay long. Uh, the one who will download the video, you do not need to download the whole video. Maybe you can take the, the, the part in the beginning where we played the video of this guy when he said, Allah, he hide the meaning of this Quran. He hide it all this time. For well, this is really important. For if Allah is the one who hide this, that telling us that Allah again is the devil.
Allah is the devil. Muhammad, he warned to stay away from the Turkish and to stay away from the African Ethiopian. Why? Because both of them, for him, they are evil. And he described, he described their faces as Asian in a very, very, you know, racist way. The hour will not come until you fight people who will wear hairy, hairy shoes and you will also fight with the flat faces like shield. He was talking about who? The Mongolian or Magnolian, sorry. The Asian. The hour will not come or begun until you fight with people with small eyes and wide faces as if their eyes are the purples uh, of Loctus and their faces are hammered shield they will be wearing shoes of hair using leather shield and uh, tying their horses to date palm trees I mean look how stupid is that so judgment day should come from a long time ago. I mean, who is using horses now? <laughs> who is using horses to attack, you know? The Magnolian? The Turkish? The big, man, the big man, you are stupid again. Because this is a sign of judgment day. But those people, they became Muslims. You are being stupid again. Your prophet never predicted that they will become Muslims. He predicted that they are the people of Gog and Magog. You're just a foolish man. According to your prophet, those are the enemies of Islam. And you will win against them. What happened? You lost. And they won. And now they are Muslims, but they are fake Muslims. Welcome to Turkey. Welcome to Erdogan. He's a Sufi. Not only he is a Sufi, he's a nightclub guy. Nightclubs in Turkey have never been closed. He is in the office for the last 20 years. He never closed one nightclub. Whiskey is served everywhere. There is no Sharia law. Girls are in the bikini. Sex tourism is top high. Welcome to Turkey. Actually, the Turkish is the one who destroyed the Islamic Caliphate always. They destroy Islam. They destroy the Caliphate of all the Caliphate, Baghdad, etc. Turkish was always behind the failure of Islam. And now the Turkish trying their best to control Islamic countries. They use Islam as an agenda. As a, as a play card, but they are not really Muslims. All of us, we knew that. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. I apologize. I should not really stay for 24 hours and 21 minutes. Unbelievable. I just throw up before I go live. And I feel sick, and I stay for four hours, 21 minutes. And how many hours I stayed in the morning? Three hours? Three hours something? Oh boy. See guys how much you hate me and I hate you? I hope you understand. So I want to say thank you all for being here. I hope we are taking notes and we are learning. We pray for the Muslim to see the truth. Muhammad is absolutely a filthy racist person. Disgusting creature. Criminal. You have no mercy. You have no ethic. You have no life. Nothing but death.
So don't follow the death, or the death will take you where the death belongs. Life is always with the Messiah. He said, I am the door, I am the way. There's no other way. Remember always, very simple thing. The God who promised you women for sex cannot be God. Even God, when he created Adam, he created one Eve. For the purpose never was about sex. It was about family. It was about love. A man who want many, many women, he will never love one woman. Islam teaches you to be in lust, to be a slave of a vagina and penises. Allah is a pimp. This is totally against the Holy God. One man, one woman. Anything else is a lost. If one woman cannot be enough for a man, then no woman can be enough to a man, which means even if there are a million. Because what one woman cannot do, a thousand women can do. A woman is a woman. And when this God, he promised you that all the women, they will look the same. That is exactly a sign of a stupidity. Because if all those million women, they look the same. So what is the point? Sleeping with the first one is the same as the second one. They have the same hair, the same face, the same eyes, even the same voice. And even they have the same name. Can you go more in stupidity more than this? Imagine you go to a dating website and then all the women there, they have the same age, the same face, the same name, the same height, the same weight. So if you date one, you date the rest. Muhammad obviously is certified stupid. And if you cannot see it, ask Jesus to take your blindness away because he is the only one who can open eyes. I cannot. All women, they look the same. Why? They are victorious. And what the point? And all of them, they sing one song. All of them, they say the same word when you talk to them. They are like Barbies made with battery. What a stupid cult. Go die. Dream about your penis. We Christians, we die looking at the Lord. For he is holy, and his house is the house of holiness. Everyone goes where he belongs. The fly go to the garbage. The bees go to the flowers. Everyone goes where he belongs. So where you belong, you go. Those who belong to Christ, they have to be fit to be with him. And those who belong to Muhammad, eh, you have to be fit to be with a child molester. And you know what I'm saying. Thank you. God bless you. I'll see you soon. If I did not come tomorrow, don't worry. You know, I will be fine. Maybe I will take a break. And uh, I hope I will be better. Thank you. God bless.